Let's talk making histograms. So when you're making a histogram, which is just that bar graph looking thing, the first thing you need to do is identify the smallest and biggest, the minimum and maximum numbers in your data set. Then you need to choose an appropriate interval width. Histograms usually have four to 12 intervals. So you wouldn't want your interval to be 20 if your numbers only go from zero to 20, because then you only have one interval. You'll make a frequency table, which we will get to in just a moment. And you'll tally the number of times a value occurs in each interval. Then you're going to place the intervals from the frequency table along the horizontal, the sideways axis of the graph, and create bars for each interval um, based on how many ticks they have in that section. So let's go ahead and do that. <clears throat> Too few intervals of a histogram will not show the distribution in the graph very well. Too many bars will spread the data out so the bars have very little height. Any interval width works for histograms. However, it's ideal to have between 4 and 12 to best display the distribution of data on a histogram. Let's look at this set of data. Make a histogram for students' pulse rates in beats beat per minute listed below. So here we have a set of data. It's not an ordered set, they're not in order, but we do have quite a lot of, quite a few numbers here. So the first thing is we need to do is identify the minimum and maximum values. That's the biggest and smallest numbers. The minimum here, if we look at here in the middle, is 55 and the largest is 92. So that's our maximum and that's our minimum, as we can see here. The frequency table must start low enough to include 54, but it must go high enough to include 92. The range of our data is 38. So that's the distance of our histogram. The, base of our, the, the horizontal axis of our histogram needs to go from at least 54 to 92, so it's a distance of about 38. What are we going to break our 38 into chunks of to make it even? 38 divided by 5 is about 8. 38 divided by 8 is about 5. So please listen to the words, not necessarily just looking at the video. Um, we're going to split our intervals into groups of about five, and we will have eight of them, which is between four and 12, so perfect. There you go, an interval width of five will create about eight bars. So we're going to start at 50 and go to 55. So yes, our lowest is, was it 54? But if we're going to be using intervals of 5, we don't want to start at 54. We want to start with numbers that make sense. So 50 to 55 includes 54. Same here down here with 90 to 95. It includes 92. We're not going to stop at 92. We're going to stop at, the, at our interval of 5. So we're going to complete the table for the data. This is a frequency table. It's basically a t-chart, but with ranges over here instead of one number. So this is 50 to 55, 55 to 60, and all numbers that go from 55, 50 to 55 will be here. Specifically, they will go from 50 to 54. This will be 55 to 59, 60 to 64, and so on. So when the number in the data lies on the border, it goes in the uppermost, which is what I was saying here. So if it was 55, it would go here. So let's put tallies in. There's a whole bunch in that one, in that one. So there's one number between 50 and 55, which is 54. So there's only one tally here. There's nothing between 55 and 60, so there's nothing here. There's six between 60 and 65, which is here. There's three between 65 and 70, six, 70, 75, two between 75 and 80, one between 85 and 90, and one 90 to 95. We've got a pretty good spread of data here. And if we look at this, just look at it, right here, if we turn this on its side, this way, we basically have our histogram. Interesting to think about. All right, so now let's take our frequency table and turn it into a histogram. 
looking down at the bottom of this graph, I will not move my mouse over there so you can still remain, uh, you'll be able to see it. You can see that we have our gaps of 50 to 55, then 55 to 60, 65, 70, and so on. And our, our vertical end, our vertical axis goes up to seven because our biggest number over here, biggest number over here is six. So we go to seven, just so we have a little bit of gap. And then we start filling it in. There's one in the first one, six in the second one, three in the next one, and so on. And this is what our histogram looks like. See what I mean about it looking a bit like this, only sideways? Here, there is an assignment on Google Classroom for this assignment. If you are confused by histograms, and I would not be terribly shocked if you were, I'll post a couple of other videos from Khan Academy to help, as well as Mrs. Frazier's videos. Please watch those if you are getting a little confused.